corn. This was a good year for us. Nice big ears, full ears. The only ears that aren't as full are ones that squirrels got into, but for the most part, some good ears. Uh, good variety. These were, I'd say, our two choice ears, which we're obviously going to save seed on, but it's more like a, a candy cane corn. So a white corn with red striping. Very pretty and uh, very hardy. Those are good ears. So I was my forearm and and then over here I keep my, my double corns, or my twin corns, so these are all corns where nice two, you know, obviously if some have two, but they're not nice ears, I don't save them, but two nice ears on a stalk, those get saved for seed. And, uh, and then depending on our needs for the year, we'll grade the rest of the corn, and you can see um, it's a good bit of corn. We didn't plant as big of an area this year but we planted more densely. And so I think we've gotten just as much or more corn in smaller area, which is what you want. And there's another one of those candy stripes. And uh, Bridget is trying to get in here and get on my corn wet, huh? Well, I'm wet too from working out there picking peas. So huh. can you explain your process of how you did this? How I did what? Like? Well, I planted, I picked out about 20 different, 20, 25 different varieties of corn. This is a land race trial. Uh, different corn that I think would do good in our system and maybe some corn that I really think the variety is uh, neat. Planted it all and uh, you know some ears like this variety I only got one ear on you know it's just a mixture of ears and uh, just got one ear but a neat it's an orange corn I mean it's about as orange as you're gonna get in a corn uh, as a that type of orange. Uh, you can see the red corns seem to do a little bit better probably the variety like right there there's Wow. That's a heck of an ear, but um, you know, planting it, and we, we planted it three to five seed per uh, in the middle of our 30 inch beds. You want to grab one of those? Wow. And this year didn't have a ton of extra rain, uh, but we did have some squirrel issues, and if a squirrel opens up that husk, and um, they let moisture get in there. So some ears didn't make it. Those ones go to the, the birds. Wow, good job. Uh, but then some ears like this one were saving seed on because it had such a tight husk. It's so tight of a husk, I had to really fight it even after it was brittle and dry. Uh, and that's what you want. So no bug damage or squirrel damage because the squirrels weren't even able to open that one. Yeah, those ones aren't going in there, Bridgie. Because, uh, they got a little moisture on them. Oh. Did you want the gore or the squash? Mm. Wow. So what, what? So what's your process? What do you mean? You let it dry. So it's dried on the stalk, but mm. I got to get things going. So I'm, I mean, these would be fine to go, but I'm gonna let them dry in the greenhouse even longer. Ah. Set them here. And then you got a couple different options. You could go ahead and strip the corn or shell the corn, taking the kernels off the cob. Uh, and then storing it that way, but really the best way is to store it here on the cob. And so we'll uh, let it dry on here for a couple weeks extra, and then we'll take it inside and store it on a rack, kind of in the open air, in the, um, in the air like that. Here's some variety for you. Whoop! Yeah. Purple and yellow and blue and red and white, orange. Those are. That's what you want to see if you're growing corn like this, uh, trying a different land race trial like this. What so, do you have, Bridget? That's some okra seeds. Uh, and then the process of saving seed for next year or moving moving forward is picking again, picking the double ears, if that's what you're going for, picking the monster ears, if that's what you're going for, picking, you know, the color that you might be going for, and then saving seed on that. So uh, that's the process. Bridget's trying to see if that's sweet corn. That is well past the sweet stage there, Bridge. Yeah. We do love our starches. And then another thing, thank you, another thing that we're also saving on, as I mentioned, with the uh, tight husk is also uh, bug proof and predator proof. So these ears, upon also being giant ears, were also huge stalks. 
uh, that produced nice tall ears that were well above. I couldn't even reach them. And that means tougher raccoons and squirrels to get. So we like those ears as well. Uh, and they're no harder to harvest. Thank you. So we'll let this dry. We'll get it inside. And uh, you know, I don't believe we'll shell anything until we're ready to make uh, corn flour and grits, huh, Bridge? So there's another neat one, like a gold colored corn there. Let's see. So, yep, that is the, the process with corn. And so is there anything special about your rack that you're drying them on? It is just hardware cloth, so it lets air come through. And uh, if these ears weren't as dry as they are, I'd lay them single file. But since they're dry, I'm laying them uh, kind of double file. And that's not an issue. It's just going to let them stay hot out here. Uh, another thing you can do is throw them in your freezer for about a week. Uh, throw, you know, a, a fill them with a, in a brown grocery bag and put them in your freezer to kill any of the weevils, uh, any bugs that may be on there. And that's always uh, not a bad thing to do, uh, especially with your seed corn. Uh, it would be smart to do that because you don't want to bring those over to the next year. Yeah, I don't think that one made it. Yeah. One's going to the birds, Bridget. <sighs> Going to the bird brigade. What did you find? <gasps> mm -hmm. Is there any? Jewel corn. No, that's a earth tone corn. Wow. Your a lot of your jewel corns are being more of a uh, popcorn type. What's the benefit that's, that's to closer to your jewel corn? To growing multicolors. Oh, looks pretty. You get a little different colored grits, corn flour, and uh, has a little bit different vitamins and nutrients, but mostly because it looks really cool. And you get a lot of variety, diversity in your corn. And not many people are growing corn that looks like that. We'll say that. <laughs> That's about a clay colored corn as you can get. So you used one word, land race. Can you explain what that means? Well, land race means that, all right. We're done putting those in there, huh? Huh? Land race means we plant a bunch of different varieties, let them crossbreed, pick the ears, pick, pick what we like, irrelevant of what the original parent stock was or the type it was, and then we'll replant that. So this year, Maybe it was supposed to be all white, but it was crossbred with some purple or, uh, you know, some different speckled corns. But we'll plant that, and then next year we'll get something different, and we'll pick the best from that. And so what we get eventually will look, it may be white, it may be red, it may be uh, all different colors, kind of like this year. But um, the goal is getting the most production, the most disease resistance, and the most, um, basically the easiest corn to grow, the best corn to grow. So that's what we're we're after, and we'll get it a couple of years. Are there certain varieties that are better for dry corn? Yeah, you only want to plant. Bye. You only want to plant flower corn, um, maybe flint corn, but that's mostly for animal feed, um, and be tough to to grind and get down to a flower. So we're growing types that are more flower corns. You can see a dent corn is what you're looking for. So nice big kernels with a dent on it. Um, that also is a more of a dent corn. Some, we did plant some that's more of a, uh, more of a type of flint corn, but, um, for the most part, flower corn. You can also make flour out of popcorn, things like that, but, and this is more of a harder kernel as well. Let's see there, nice. It's a blue with speckling on it. It's not, it's very pretty. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's what we grow in. You know, you can see here. Uh, this is what your sweet corn will look like because it doesn't have the starch. It has a lot of sugars, and so it shrivels up a lot. And uh, that you can make a good corn flour with as well if you dry it, but you don't get as much. Uh, and uh, you know, that's just not the purpose. We may throw some sweet corn in when we grind this, but the goal is a real good, hearty. 
Corn flour. Corn. Corn. So that corn. sweet flour, that sweet corn you just showed, is it the same amount of drying time as this? Yeah. Yeah. So it's shoved up that much more. And this is not going to no, continue. These, it'll look like that at 0% moisture or 8% moisture. So we are not, we're not waiting for them to shrivel up. We're just waiting for any more, or any excess moisture that might be in the, um, basically in the cob. We want to shirt her up and kind of pull out, which we can. It's not too hard to do that. There's a pink corn. So, yep. So that's how we do corn here. And uh, I guess one other thing with land race is, is what we're, it's not like we're just trying to create the super corn. We're trying to create a great corn for our locality our ecosystem, our moisture, our humidity. And so my my land race corn that I save isn't gonna work great maybe for your, your climate, uh, but you could certainly do the same thing and grow a good land race corn. So that's what we do. And we'll get back to work. See you guys.